All right, never Hello, everybody. This is Julie D from NordoniaHills.News, and welcome to Chatting with Zach. <laughs> I, I created a new thing, you know? Um, yeah. So hello, everybody. This is Zach Shafron, and he founded Cleveland Sports Talk. Welcome, Zach. Well, thank you so much uh, for having me. I, I really appreciate it. This is so cool. So tell us how you started Cleveland Sports Talk and what is it? So <clears throat> the story essentially goes that way back in, say, 2010, I've been, so I'm 26 now. So I've been a Cleveland sports fan really my, my entire life uh, since I was a little boy. And essentially what started to happen is my parents saw me paying more attention to the various sports teams instead of like doing my homework and studying as a little boy. And so this was a, a bit of a concern for them because they saw this little boy, he wasn't doing his homework, he was too busy watching LeBron James and the Cavs way back in like 2003 or something like that. And so because of this, I got frustrated and almost as like a, um, I'll, I'll show you or something like that. I created this Cleveland Sports Talk Facebook page because I wanted to talk about Cleveland sports instead of doing my homework. And that's essentially how Cleveland Sports Talk was born, was really through, uh, the frustrations of my parents and um, my passion for Cleveland sports, which has been, like I said, for my in, in entire life. So it's more than a Facebook page now, right? Oh, yes. It's uh, a website. Uh, we have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, as mentioned. Um, We've done podcasts and we're planning to do more in the future. There's a little preface for you, but we've done a lot of um, different things just uh, throughout the years. And it's been truly a magical run. What kind of reach numbers do you have now for your audience? Oh, so the website itself is, uh, it generates uh, thousands of viewers every day. Uh, we're closing in on 6 million hits total. So that's a uh, exciting milestone upcoming. We're also closing in on 90,000 uh Twitter followers and hoping to get to a hundred thousand in in the the future. That would be an exciting thing to reach. So it's been a a run that you know started really from nothing, almost as like a joke. I made this page like to almost spite my parents. And, and this is what it's turned into. It's been unbelievable. People in town actually might know your parents. We should probably reveal that. Yes, uh, they they might know my parents through, well, various things throughout the the community. Yes, so it's it's the last name. It it, it runs with me. Yes, um, people may know um, your dad, Howard Shafron, owns a lot of property in town for businesses. He's actually my landlord. <laughs> sure, and, yes. uh, he, you know, he, you know, owns quite a bit around town. 
So he has uh, done a whole lot for various communities around here. So yes, he's done a whole lot and his father, so my grandfather, we call him Papa, Papa Larry, may he rest in peace. Right. Um, he was uh, truly an inspiration and, and my father is an inspiration to me as well. But my grandfather was just truly this uh, just unbelievable figure just with his various ventures and different, like you said, properties that he bought or sold or did this or that and and all of these different things so it was just an amazing thing to see as a young boy growing up just the way my parents and so my grandfather his son so my father ended up working for his father and uh so that is another cool thing also that the just the family ties and and how that worked out definitely um so this is a standard question i ask a lot of my interviewees um have there been any struggles that you've had to overcome to get where you are now oh yes uh plenty of struggles just Growing up, I uh, was diagnosed with epilepsy, and uh, this is, it's, I like to say it's its not the worst thing you could be diagnosed with, like it's not, say, cancer or MS, but the hardest part with epilepsy is just the not knowing, the not knowing when you're going to have a, a seizure, like I could have a seizure in the next two minutes. And I have no idea. And so the problem with that is a lot of things are taken away from you, such as driving, um, independence, just the ability to even walk around in a place and not have this fear of just could I have a seizure in the next, like I said, couple of minutes and if I did, would there be someone there that could advocate for me, that could tell people he's okay, you don't have to worry, you don't have to call 911, he's just having his usual seizure, he'll be fine, and we can move on. And so with that, and, and just the difficulties that it brought on me is that I've been unable to graduate from college. So I, I don't have a college degree. Um, I've been stuck at home a lot of the time. I've relied on various transportations such as my parents driving me around and, and just uh, not being able to take myself places or, or be independent has, has been difficult. And it has uh, kind of taken away a lot of opportunities that I could have had because of this fact that I just can't go somewhere without this constant fear of my condition and, and what it could bring to the situation. Well, I think it is um, very commendable of you with this challenge to still go ahead and create something. And uh, you're, you know, basic, basically making the best out of a situation. It's like, okay, so I can't go anywhere. You know, I have to create something of my own. And, you know, because of that, I mean, this basically this business is, is, is uh, blooming. So you took the challenge and you're like, what can I do? I can't just sit around and be sad about this. What can I do to make my life better? And this thing that you've been working on, you know, I'm probably at sure when you started it, you didn't think it was going to be a business, but you know, you're like, wow, this is really could be something. So, you know, I mean, maybe you could give some shout outs to um, potential sponsors, you know, who are you trying to go after? Maybe they'll watch this and uh, contact you. 
Yeah, well, we have a really big reach. And and so uh, if you're looking to get your, your name out there, um, you can definitely uh, contact this brand of mine website. It, it's it is a website, but it's it's more so a, a brand. Like our our slogan is "Built by Fans," and that's truly the um, the truth of of this whole thing. Is I was just a little boy and I was a fan, and I made this page, and it turned into a website. And all the writers and all the people that help me are really volunteers for the most part. And they're just big fans of Cleveland sports. They love the teams and they do this because of their passion for this website. And then just the various teams, Browns, Cavs, the Guardians, and their love for those teams and writing about them and uh, talking about them. So just that in and of itself, I think is sort of this magical thing. And I don't know if you're watching this, if you're a believer in like fate or just that type of thing, but I kind of feel like me creating this, silly little Facebook page that was almost like a joke, literally almost a middle finger to my parents, so to speak. And I hate to to say that, but it was almost like, uh, I'll show you, I'm going to make this page and talk about my teams and uh, yeah, fine. I'll do my homework, but uh, I'm also going to continue on. And Well, you know, and I, I hate to cut you off there, but um, what you've done is created a launching pad for writers to, in some cases, start their career um, or, you know, add on to their career. Because I know when uh, Darius Sethna was in high school, you know, he was uh, doing a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, play calling with us in high school sports. And he also did some writing for you. And he is now in college um, pursuing his dream. And I know other writers that you're working with, you're kind of like helping them with their careers as well. So at this point, it's not just about you anymore. You're creating a platform for other people to thrive and, um, you know, take their content to the next level. Yeah, exactly. So our pitch to people, writers, is basically, hey, you take this, you work with us for a period of time, you put it on your resume, and we're not saying that it alone is going to, you know, give you a career, but in part, putting this on your resume will be a big help for you to find that potential career or that dream job that you've always wanted as a sports reporter for this team or this wherever you wanted to go and just that pitch has really drawn a lot of writers and just even without uh that we just have people that love the games and they love the teams like I said and so they'll just do it volunteer and it works out nicely and we have lots of writers that just want to be a part of something and it's an added bonus that they could put it on their resume too. So I think it was like last year I was searching on the web and I found your website and then I'm like, Oh, well, who started this? And it's like Zach Shafron. I mean, I didn't even know anything about this. And I'm like, and as soon as I saw your picture, it's like, Oh my gosh, that's Howard's son. And, you know, you know, just recently we're starting to work together because my escalation in high school sports that we want to do this fall. And you've actually helped us by connecting us with two writers that we're going to use for the high, some of the high school content. So 
I mean, it's just like you say, sometimes fate kind of like um, pushes you through and you never know where you're going to end up. Yeah, it's very true. And I, and I jokingly like to say that I always get offended when people say I look just like my <laughs> And it's literally if I'm in the the Northfield area or uh, the Nordonia, that type of place, anyone there seems to recognize me because of the fact that I look just like my father and I, I just I find that to be a really funny just how similar us two are and how um, it's just always oh you look just like your dad or this or that and um, I, I find that to be funny so yeah you are not the only one don't worry so now you have some exciting news you are going to do something new. You're going to start something new. You're taking all of this to the next level. So tell everybody what your plans are. Yes. So the exciting news is that uh, Cleveland Sports Talk has is, is mainly been about the articles and writing about the various teams in article format and what the exciting news is and the big plan is that i'm going to in honor of say a jabbering julie so to speak or or, or something of that nature um start my own uh sports talk show and this is going to be just something that i take and uh, sort of platform Cleveland Sports Talk to the next level. And what I plan to do with this is obviously talk about the, the various teams, but just the different nuances that are with the sporting world and um, that type of thing. So it's not just going to be your plain old uh, average Joe sports talk show, but it's going to find the unique uh, like variances of the sporting world and sort of go from there. And that's what I want to bring to a, a sports talk show of mine, because I feel like uh, there are so many shows out there these days and just anywhere you look, somebody's doing a podcast or a uh, recording or this or that. So I want to do something that's a little different. And that's well, it is going to be different because it's going to be your perspective. So everybody has their own perspective on things. I actually saw a commercial for a mastermind class with uh, Ron Howard, who's famous director. And uh, he said, you know, there's been so many movie ideas that have been done over and over and over again and he said you know you may want to do another movie that's similar to other ones and he said do it because it's not going to be like all the other ones because it's going to be your perspective so um you know i think you can rise above and the fact that you're going to be starting it in july and it's kind of like pre 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 brown season and then by the time you get to pre brown season you know you'll have more people finding out about it by the way, you and I share like our most favorite Cleveland sport is the Browns. That's one thing we have in common. And I think Cleveland in general is Browns town. Right. Not saying everyone's favorite is is the Browns, but uh, if you want to know Cleveland for its sports, it's Cleveland Browns. Now, when the Cavs were on their championship run that may have changed a little bit with the fair weatherness of, I don't even know if that's a word, but um, it is now. Yeah, it is now of the uh, exciting um, championship run. And when the Cavs were with LeBron and, and had their amazing teams, I think Cleveland might've been more of a Cavs town, but even just saying that is weird. 
uh, because it just feels temporarily like, just yeah, temporarily. temporarily it just feels like this is a brownstown and we love our now guardians and um calves as well of course but yeah number one browns football of course i think baseball would be more exciting if there was less games so many games Yes, there are a ton of baseball games. Uh, you've got not just the fact that there are 162 in a season, but just the fact that they've had to literally reconstruct the game because people were getting so bored. So they had to speed up the pitch clock and... Uh, tried to make things more exciting just to adhere to the fan base and i would say more so to like the modern day where we're used to everything being like a snap with i don't know just i messaging or that's just a one example something where you write something and it's instantly sent to someone else so with that being said Baseball's kind of been that transition where they've wanted to make everything faster and more immediate because that's how people are these days. We want everything right away. And it's not like where your father's or grandfather's time where it was uh, just cool, calm, and collected watching the ball game and smoking my cigar with my you know, whiskey and uh, I don't know, just how's, how uh, sports were then. So, uh, yeah, baseball has definitely transitioned a lot. Well, that is very, um, very true. And, you know, they can speed everything up, but I think what they really need to do is reduce the amount of games. And obviously they can't do that because of the sponsors and the money and everything. But I think that would definitely help. But, you know, I am so excited about the Browns every year. There's always a quarterback controversy. There's always, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, receivers getting in trouble and different players getting in trouble. And it's never a dull moment. No. And the thing with the Browns and just NFL football in general, and I guess you could say this about college football too, is not only do you have – a ton less games but you have the season in which there's the week build up to the game and that makes it even more exciting so like every week just say for example the browns are playing the steelers our most hated rival you should know that if you're any type of browns fan uh the build up for that whole entire week every day is a there's new talking points and there's this and there's that. And each day we talk about the different matchups and, and the different uh and the different like strategies and the, this injuries. And the injuries and in, in, in practices and everything just makes it even more exciting for that final build up to the actual game itself typically on Sunday, sometimes Monday, Thursday, Monday. it's yeah. all over the place sometimes, <laughs> but yeah. Thursday, so <laughs> it's that buildup that makes football even more exciting compared to, like you said, baseball, where there's a game every day. And for some people, they may be at peace with that, where they, they like having the game every day. And then others, it's, it's, for me, it's the buildup and the excitement that just leads to that final actual game itself and so that's what's most exciting about the uh football season and the browns yes well speaking of exciting i can't wait to see your first show and we'll definitely share it out so people can watch it and you know hopefully hopefully people will follow uh your your uh content uh all the different places that it is and um i think it's going to be um well you know definitely a step up for you well, thank you so much, and I uh, 
really appreciate just getting the chance to talk to you about Cleveland Sports Talk and then the Cleveland teams in, in general. Awesome. Well, um, we'll have all your contact information down below in the in the description and links to what you have um, so people can follow you and wherever they are. No, don't you wish there was just one social media platform instead of all these things? <laughs> yeah, there's so many different places and you have right. to post and repost and it becomes exhausting. <laughs> I know. It's like, <sighs> they're probably planning on starting something new as we're speaking. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember when I was, and I mentioned little boy when talking about just starting the the Facebook page itself. But people used to laugh at Facebook and now it's like if you don't have a Facebook, you're like doing it wrong and you need to make it because how else are we going to talk to you? And it's it's just so funny how things evolve over time. And same same thing with Twitter. Twitter, at one point, people laughed at you if you had a Twitter. And now it's like you have to have a Twitter to know what's going on. So it's- Well, especially certain genres like sports. Yes. So um, Twitter is kind of like in transition right now, but obviously um, sports is a big topic and um, you're thriving there. Other people aren't really having much luck, but it's definitely a good category or a good platform for you. Yeah, it, it's amazing how just the evolution of uh, information and, and the spread of information and I- ideas has evolved over time. And with this Cleveland sports talk it almost and I mentioned fate uh, to begin at this podcast but it's almost funny that I made that page again out of spite or just out of like a um, I'll show you type of deal and in, in reality what I was doing was not only making a brand for for me and and my um disability that I've had and this giving me an outlet giving me something to do giving me a purpose but also just fitting with the times that were evolving and so as time has gone on the Facebook page evolved into a website which evolved into a Twitter which evolved into Instagram and so on and so forth. So it's really been an amazing run and an amazing journey throughout the years. And I've um, just been so blessed with so many different people that have helped throughout the course of time and have made it a successful platform. Yeah, when you think about it, Zuckerberg started Facebook from nothing. And it actually kind of started as a college joke. And, uh, you know, Twitter was just, you know, some kids, like I think college. I mean, so a lot of these things, um, you know, there's probably somebody starting something right now that's going to be big down the line. And you just never know. You never truly know. And uh, if I could, like, give out a a message to anybody watching this, it would really be just kind of, Go with your 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 gut and and do what you feel is best for you. And the classic saying, ignore the haters, but there's always going to be people out there that are either laughing at what you're doing or um, doing something else or or this or that. But if you feel like what you're doing is right, you should continue to do it and even if it doesn't feel necessarily like it's thriving at the current moment you got to give it some time and work and continue to work and then as time goes on you'll feel if it's a truly like a successful project or if it you know we all swing and miss once in a while so if that's the case then you find something else and and do that just keep trying yeah just keep trying and uh that would be my advice and i got lucky 
and I found something that worked. And uh, so I, I'm blessed with that. And I've just been continuing to try and improve it and, and make it into what it's become today. So that's been truly just, once again, a blessing, but just um, amazing to see the growth over the years and, and to continue to love the uh, Cleveland teams. That's the basis of it, right? So just starting from that Facebook page to, like I said, the eventual website and then the social media platforms and just going from there, it's I've been an honor and a pleasure and I, I just love doing it and I love writing about the teams. Yeah, I think we forgot to even mention that you're actually your articles are on Nordonhills.news as well. So they can see your writing right on our our website and they'll they'll see a lot of links out to your uh website as well. So everything's all connect interconnected. Yes, I wrote close to two thousand articles in my um span of doing this since like 2010 or so so um yeah lots of writing lots of reporting lots of fun and uh yes i um am on uh, your website and i was even published on in the paper so that was cool too so exactly exciting run and uh i look forward to continuing it yeah, it's just the start, just the beginning. So, well, thank you for taking the time. And I love your message, uh, you know, going out to other people, inspiring them to, you know, pursue their dreams as well. It's a great message. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, they get, uh, especially, um, and this kind of ties into what we've been talking about with social media and just the way things are, I think people kind of get uh, sort of just this idea that, oh, I have this thought, but I'm just going to ignore it because so-and-so is doing this differently or this or that. And there's just countless examples. And so my- Or somebody with a disability. They're like, oh, I can't do it because I have a disability. It's like, maybe not, that may not be the case. Exactly. And for me with my seizures and, and that problem, I've continued to try and make the best of it. And it hasn't been easy. I'm, I'm, I'm not denying that at all. I'm not trying to make it seem like it is something easy to work with, but- just like I've been saying, making the most of it, making the best of a problem and taking that and building something that you feel can be um, a special uh, either brand or website or even just a social media page, like a Facebook page, whatever you feel works is what you should do. And don't you think um, whatever it is, people should try to start something that has a positive message um, instead of like creating something to make fun of people. It, I think it would probably, you know, if they're going to create something, the world needs more positivity because there's so much negative automatically uh we just need to spread more positivity more joy more hope well absolutely and i think that uh with that being said like if you're gonna create a sports talk page or something like that well in that case you shouldn't like pretend that all the your teams are good or oh whatever. right 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 but um Yes, if you're just uh, creating something to start something that matters, absolutely, it should be of positivity, it should be um, inspiring others, and if you're 
let's just say you're doing a um, group on epilepsy, you should think of ways to inspire people to be um, better with their conditions or just the countless examples. So yes, I, I definitely feel like, um, well, you don't want to pretend like all the teams are good. Well, that then that wouldn't be a Cleveland sports talk page, obviously. Unfortunately. Right. I mean, and you have to keep it real, but I mean, the overall message, um, cause I, there's just people that tear other people down on social media for no reason. Um, so, I mean, you just keep it real. You talk about what happens and, you know, with an overlying, you know, positive message, like, oh, it's, I mean, really the Browns is always like, we'll get them next year. You know, if there's a bad year. So even the Browns are, you know, optimistic at times, even when there's no evidence that they should be. I would just say the fact that fans stick with the Browns year after year after year, no matter what is like proof of this optimism and right. the fact that like, we love our Browns and, and no matter how bad they are, we're always going to love them. Like we went through years of literally no wins and we still stuck with them. And so just that in and of itself is commendable. So like you were saying, just keeping that positivity with your sports teams and, and with life and its various uh, hindrances we'll say, uh, yeah, just keeping it real, but uh, trying to be positive. Well, anyways, um, I think we've jabbered on enough for today. And uh, thank you for taking the time. And I'm sure we're all looking forward to your show and your future writing and all the things that we're going to be doing. So once again, thank you uh, so much for having me. And I hope I spread a positive message to uh, <clears throat> various followers and, and everybody watching. So thank you. And I, it was a pleasure to be on your show. Well, thank you. Goodbye, everybody.